Hey, welcome back to the Introvert Circus. I thought I would make a quick little video to talk about uh, my honest review of Superpower Dogs. So I went um, to see Superpower Dogs documentary um, in, on the IMAX screen here in Portland on Saturday with my partner and I had been very, very excited to see it. There's been so much publicity for this documentary and my overall opinion is it was really cute. I think it was good. I think that it's worth seeing if it's playing near you. Um, and it was fun. I mean, hey, I'm always going to be excited about seeing dogs on a giant, giant, giant screen. Um, and so that was very cool. Um, but I have critiques. Like, I think it was good. I know that it was primarily audience-wise, I'm guessing, designed for kids um, or families. It was 45 minutes featuring five, actually six dogs, but two of them were together. Uh, so they were trying to cover a lot in a really short amount of time. And I think that they overall did a decent job um, of doing so. It was, I think, heavy on search and rescue dogs, which makes sense in some ways. It was really heavily focusing on following um, a young puppy, Halo, who was in the process of becoming um, certified as a search and rescue dog. And that was very cool to see. And I think they did a great job of talking about what that training process, at least like on a surface level, looks like. And then there were um, two bloodhounds who are... Um, who are searching for, uh, employed to search for poachers at a animal sanctuary in Kenya and an avalanche dog and, um, a Newfoundland water rescue dog. And I thought those were awesome. And I really liked it. I would have liked to see them go into more detail. In some ways, I feel like, um, by having so many dogs and, so many different kinds of search dogs it would have been really cool for the documentary to go a little bit more in depth about what that work look like work looks like I feel in particular um the avalanche dogs kind of got shortchanged in it I feel like it didn't really give a lot of detail about what that work looked like um I mean I was always happy to see the Newfoundland because I have a Newfoundland so that was very cool um the water photography was nice. Um, I would have liked to see more about like what that work really looks like. I feel like people who are just general audience members might not have come away with an understanding of that. Um, but that's okay. I, my primary critique of the documentary was about the Golden Retriever Ricochet in California. So they start <coughs> um, by bringing in this Golden Retriever um, footage of this dog training uh, and talking about how um, he had been being trained to be a service dog when he was a puppy. And I was like, sweet. We hadn't seen a service dog in anywhere in this documentary. And I was really excited they were going to talk about service dogs. And then they're talking about his training and they discuss that they, he was washed as a service dog because he had distraction issues um, that they weren't able to, to sort of train through, which is great. I was so excited. I was like, oh, okay, we're going to see this dog in a different capacity or maybe we're going to transition to seeing a different service dog and we're going to talk about a dog being washed, which I think is really vital for the general public to see more of. We don't... Um, see a lot of those representations even in like documentaries or articles or things and I'm a dog writer I'm guilty of that too I don't talk a lot about washing service dogs and how I talk about how difficult it is for service dogs um for to identify service dogs and train service dogs but you know we don't talk a lot about washed dogs and I think we should do that more I think it's really important and so I was really excited. So they're like, okay, so here's this dog he washed. And then they were talking about how he he was gone on to have this other this other life. And I was like, oh, okay, interesting. And the in a nutshell, the deal with Ricochet is I don't really understand. Here's my main problem. He's sort of involved with this surfing program that seems to be a surf program for children, primarily. It seems children with disabilities. Um Okay, but then, like, maybe he's also, like, mostly the pet of this woman who was interviewed in it and her son who has sensory, process sensory processing disorder and who Ricochet helped him gain the confidence to surf. 
it was very blurry there. I'm not right sure about what was happening. Um, that was strange. I also have no problem with surfing dogs. I think there are some incredible surfing dogs. Um, Ricochet did not seem particularly comfortable on a surfboard. It may have been filming. I'm not going to say that the dog is was stressed or uncomfortable um, because of the surfing. It could have been the film crew. It could have been the day. He didn't look super thrilled to be on a surfboard compared to other dogs that I've witnessed who are very confident and very calm. He was, he looked stressed to me. That could be any number of things. But what was particularly confusing was then they started talking to a veteran who was maybe a volunteer in the program. That was also very unclear, who has PTSD. And then we see him walking around a busy place with this dog. And he's talking about how Ricochet helps him because of the things he's gone through and that Ricochet will just stop and not move if he thinks that the veteran is going to walk into a situation that's going to trigger him or stress him out. And there are like multiple things going awry in this situation for me. One, I don't think it's his dog. Two, the dog is not a service dog. We were really made, it was made very clear early on this dog was washed as a service dog. He's wearing a bandana that says therapy dog. Therapy dogs don't have public access rights. They were in a public like outdoor space. So I'm, I imagine the space was dog friendly. So that's fine. But it was so confusing. Also, was the dog tasking? Maybe. Maybe. It sure didn't seem like it to me. And the dog was certainly not his service dog and was not a service dog. In fact, we had already learned the dog was not an appropriate candidate to be a service dog. So while I'm super glad that this dog is very helpful to the people who come in contact with him in some way, I was so frustrated and I left the theater so irritated that this documentary, which is great, ended up further muddying the general public's understanding of what's a service dog, what's a therapy dog, and how those are different jobs that dogs can have. Very different jobs. There's already so much general confusion about this. I don't know why they picked this dog to be in the documentary, I don't know. I, I don't know. All I can assume is somebody knew somebody because it was not a very compelling story. It was just a weird story. Like there are thousands and thousands and thousands of amazing working service dogs in like in the, not even in the US, they featured multiple dogs from outside of the US. In the world, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of amazing working service dogs. Why not pick one of those? Why pick this very weird situation that only seeks to like, that only, ends up confusing viewers about what a service dog is if they're not coming into the theater knowing that. So that's my primary critique of the documentary. Um, I still think it's cute. I still think it's good, but that's a big critique. And then secondary, at the very end, they had this moment where they were like, if you want a dog like these dogs, like do your research. And I was like, yes. And that's where it ended though. Like we're profiling this adorable Dutch Shepherd puppy Halo for most of the documentaries where there's like the through storyline. And then all these other amazing working dogs. And I'm like, you need to say these dogs are not pets. These dogs do not go into pet homes and like have great qualities of life. And their families don't have great qualities of life if they bring in these dogs that they're not prepared to have and not going to offer the kind of enriching, enriching working life these dogs need. So that's like a minor critique. It was like they went like just close enough to being like, do your research before you get a dog. But I really wanted them to take it a step further and say, most of these dogs who are amazing superhero working dogs are not going to be like ideal family pet dogs. So that's my critique. My real main critique was of the service dog storyline or the therapy dog storyline or whatever it was because I don't understand what that dog is. Did they train through the distraction issues and he is a therapy dog or excuse me, he is a service dog. See, now I'm confused. Or is he a therapy dog? As like a former service dog handler, it was just really frustrating to see. I would like to see these stories be clearly articulated to viewers, um, of particularly things that are aimed at the general public and at kids. There's already so much confusion. We don't need documentaries making it more confusing. So that's my review of the movie. It was super cute. I'm glad I went. 
Um, if it's playing near you, I think it's worth seeing, but I just wish they had been more thoughtful about service dogs and the optics about how service dogs are understood. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you have not already subscribed, and I'll see you soon.